here. Good to know that the Lord is here. Yes. And, and why don't we stand? Let's just invite the presence of the Lord. It's so good to have Alexis and PJ with us this morning. And our visitors. And each of you, I want you to just have whatever you need you've got today. Turn the gain down maybe a little bit. Whatever needs you got today, maybe it needs to be uh, surrendered to Him. Amen. Yes, yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. I really appreciate the Lord touching me and helping me today. Amen. All right. If you got a need, why don't you let it be known by raising your hand today? God knows that need. And He's touched by that need. Amen. Let's pray. That's right. Father, we just love you today and we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for your goodness and for your mercy. We plead the blood of God, Lord, in every area of our lives. We submit and surrender to your day. I thank you and praise you, Lord, for just giving us the strength to be here. Oh, God, forgive us another Lord's day. God, another Father's day, Lord. God, another day together that we worship you, your people, Lord. Oh, God, we praise you. We thank you for all you do, all you do.
unfriendly. That's not my motive at all. But let's get out and greet one another in the Lord and just let everybody know you're glad to be going to heaven with them. Amen? All right.
All right, praise the Lord. All right, I would say we're going to take a few minutes and get out and shake hands and fellowship and everything, but we just did that. See, I'm not losing it. All right, we're going to come to you for the Sunday morning uh, tithes and offerings. Thank you for all you do to be faithful uh, to the kingdom of heaven, the body of Christ, to our church. It is a miracle that our church, amen, does the things that we do. And I'm telling you that I'm not saying that uh, uh, like today's call. It's a great thing that God is doing yes. through us yes. as we be faithful to the kingdom. Amen. Right. All right. Yes, Father, we do thank you for this Father's day you've given us and all the fathers are blessed by God who, who have surrendered to Christ Jesus, Lord. And we ask that we continue to grow together as one, lifting up the name of Christ Jesus, share and plant seeds and let people know the love that God has for them also. We ask that you bless us today in giving. As we give with a cheerful heart, we ask that you bless the gift as well as the giver. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. 
And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. And I just thought, if we could just take very seriously every day, every moment of every day, living our lives, representing Jesus, representing the God who loved us so much that it will pass on to our children and our grandchildren and to our neighbors and to our acquaintances, the people God puts in our lives, God will use us to bring them to Christ. Amen. Happy Father's Day. Uh, we have a little treat for each one of you, so uh, feel free to grab it on the way back to your seat. Praise the Lord. I appreciate God and thank God for the institution of the home. And uh, God ordained it. And I want you to know it's never been in under more assault. Thank you, Brother Donovan. Than it is today, probably. Definitely not in the last several hundred years. And uh, uh, the home is something we're fighting for. Amen. Amen. But I remember back in the 70s, I believe it was, the uh, there was a... a Slogan that was kind of going around. It was talking about the dumbing down of the dads in the home, the dumbing down, and the commercials were were in that light and everything. And it just tried to make uh, uh, the dad look like an imbecile. You know what I mean? Like he couldn't think and, and didn't know what to do. But I want you to know, dads fight a fight, amen, amen for the families. And if you ever wonder why you're under attack, it's because God is doing something through you to benefit the body of Christ. Whether it be your home, your family, your neighbors, your, your acquaintances, whatever, God is using you to be His hands extended for His glory. Amen? Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Uh, have I forgotten anything? Brother Donovan. Uh, well... <laughs> Can we anoint and pray for you? Yes, you amen. I really appreciate that. Oh, amen, amen. Yesterday when I was thinking about calling somebody, I was thinking about coming in just for this purpose. Yes. And then making an exit if God didn't do it speedily. Oh, and I appreciate you helping us. Amen. That's right. Amen. amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Can you stand to your feet and let's pray? Amen. Oh, God, our Heavenly Father. Oh, God, this day, oh, God, that you give us the power of your mind and your word, dear Lord. Demonstrate to us, oh, God, your power today. Come down, oh, God, and it's your kind of glory and touch of life. Remove what is in the earth, oh, God, and be your servant, oh, God. Tell us what you need to tell us. Are we there? Say amen. 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 
Luke 9 and 46, says, Then there arose a reasoning among them, which of them should be greatest. And Jesus, perceiving the thought of their heart, took a child and set him by him, and said unto them, Whosoever shall receive this child in my name receiveth me. And whosoever shall receive me receiveth him that sent me. For he that is least among you all, the same shall be great. And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him, because he followeth not with us. And Jesus said unto him, Forbid him not. For he that is not against us is for us. Amen. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face. And they went and entered into the village, a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was as though it would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? And he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask Andrew, if he will, to just ask God to just anoint this vessel and all of our ears that we can hear individually what God wants to speak to us today. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your goodness to us. Thank you, for Lord, for getting us all here. Lord, thank you for your kindness and your faithfulness. Lord, I'm asking that you would anoint our pastor to preach the word this morning. God, that you would anoint our hearts. Lord, to receive it, for our ears to hear it. God, that you would anoint us to uh, deliver this word in our lives. Lord, I pray that you would uh, speak to us, convict our hearts, exhort us where we need the exhortation. <coughs> we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. You can be seated this morning. I, uh, I guess the thing that led up mostly to this thought, this week I was watching uh, uh, a YouTube video. I think it was Carter Conlon preaching it. And, uh, but anyway, there was a short that come on in one of the deals there. And it was, uh, I've never seen uh, any of the, other than the, the Ten Commandments. I saw that when I was a kid. Uh, but there was a, sh a short excerpt from the movie, I guess, about Jesus and his disciples. And I recognized the actor that played one of the disciples there. And there was a Roman guard standing back at a distance there, and he was just taking all the conversation in, but the Roman guard, uh, Jesus was explaining, not the Roman guard, the disciple, Jesus was explaining to the disciple that our job as Christians was not to take over Rome and to take over and destroy Rome and all the Romans. Our job was to be godly examples, to turn the other cheek, to fight the good fight of faith, not the natural fight that we see so much as the supernatural fight that puts our confidence and our trust in the Lord. Amen. And I tell you, I went back and looked for it and looked for it. And I normally when I see something like that that kind of speaks to me, I save it somewhere. And if I did, I, I didn't find it. But anyway, uh, you know, in the book of Mark 3, 17, it says, And James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, and he surnamed them Belenerges, which is the sons of thunder. And we see here John in his early days. This is that same John that leaned on the bosom of Jesus later on. This is that same John that, that wrote the, 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 the gospel of John, that wrote the epistles, the first and second and third John. The same John that was exiled on Patmos. And, and the Lord gave to him the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen to the churches. And so, so precious are the words that God gave them and everything. But uh, the word boy urges there means sons of commotion, a uh, state of confusion, or a noisy disturbance. If you look these words up and follow them and their derivatives, that's exact uh, quotation of what they uh, said about them in the Greek 
faithful to fight the good fight of faith, to serve the Lord faithfully, to be an encouragement to the home. Not necessarily so much just in my home, especially not currently. All of my kids are grown, and, and uh, so I don't have the little uh, things pitter patter going on that I used to. But yesterday, uh, 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 Kay and, and uh, my wife worked from about 12 o'clock till Kim was cleaning up at 9 o'clock last night the kitchen and everything uh, just to make cupcakes. I mean, there's so many things, so many hindrances, so many distractions in the world we live in today. It seems like that it's everything you're going to do, it turns out to be a fight many times. But I want you to know it's a fight that's worth fighting for. It's a fight that's worth being faithful for. Casting all of our care upon Him. For He careth for us. Amen. My heart, I don't know why and I'm not trying to embarrass anyone. But Brother Marcus, he's going out Tuesday, going to Florida for a few weeks. And I tell you, I'm just thinking there went not my heart with you. Uh, you know what I mean? I want God's protection and God's grace to be upon him. But I'm telling you, brother, God can handle it. God can do it. God can minister. But as God ministers to you and I, he tries to give us the discernment to be led by the Spirit. So we need to be under authority. Amen. We need to be sensitive to what God is trying to do in our lives many times when we really don't understand what the Lord is trying to do. You know, the religious leaders of the day there, the, the Pharisees and everything, they were not nearly as concerned about protecting God's people in the church as they were protecting their own traditions and they were out to protect themselves and their affairs instead of working the work of God. They had the, they had the letter down. They had the scriptures memorized. You know, they had everything down in the natural that they could see that need to be done, that needed to be observed. But I'm telling you, there's a lot of times God is wanting to do things through you that's bigger than what you see. Yes. I'm talking to dads and all yes. believers today. Yes. If we can always see the, the end of a thing from the beginning like the Lord sees. If we can always understand exactly what God is doing in our life, our battle would be so much easier. But we don't always understand. We don't always see what God is trying to do. But we need to rest assured and realize that God is doing something in our life. I want to ask you today, where is your heart? Amen. Toward the Lord. Concerning the Lord. Where is your heart today concerning the righteousness and, and the walk of God in faith and in holiness and pleasing the Lord Jesus Christ? They accused Jesus of working with the devil. That was the religious sect of that day. I started to go through a, a, a different array of different things that I read this week. Brother, the, the woke agenda, all the things that seems to be going on in the world. I mean, the world is confused. America is confused. They don't know the top from the bottom, the beginning from the end. They really do not know. Many people are in such darkness. It's not just the darkness, the God, but the God of our world, the God of this world, has blinded the minds of them that believe not. It's not just that darkness, but it seems to be a darkness of almost every area of their life. Leadership. When you go, I found that the best way to help and support someone today is just to be faithful to pray for them. Amen, brother. I'm telling you, you can't compete with the world's funds and finances. It seems like that the world, the Soros and, and all the people that's very well to do, they got more means to help and to do than you and I are going to be able to help. But I'm telling you, if we will be faithful to pray, if we will be faithful to trust the Lord, if we will be faithful to endeavor to please God, endeavor to be a light and a blessing wherever we go and let God use us severally for His glory. Amen. It don't matter if you're a dad or a mom or a son or a daughter. It don't matter what you are. If you will trust the Lord, God is doing something in our life. The whole duty of man is to fear God and keep His commandments. Today we're living in a world, even in the church world, they were, he said, what is it that you uh, were talking about when you were there in the way? And basically they were talking about who should be the greatest among them. 
Who's the big eyes and little U's? In other words, who am I above? And, and you know what I'm saying? And that is so much the natural bent that we live in today. It's all about climbing, amen, to the top. Even if you have to climb on the back of somebody else. And that somebody else may be an acquaintance, a friend, a family member, or a loved one. But I'm telling you, that's not what it's all about. It's all about walking humbly before the Lord and allowing God to have His way. In your heart and life. Amen. Amen. There were those who wanted to walk and work with Jesus. But they just couldn't bring themselves to follow through. They just couldn't bring themselves to trust God. You remember when Jesus, the uh, centurion was there and he had a, a servant that was sick and, and Jesus was going to come pray for him and heal him and, and uh, uh, he said Lord he said I'm a man under authority I say to this one go and come and do this and he do it and I don't, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof just speak the word only and he'll be healed and Jesus said I marvel I've not seen so great faith no not in all this world but today, it seems like we're living in a world that's, that's been, especially in America, got raised with a silver spoon, expecting this and that, expecting everything to happen at their convenience. But I want you to know serving God is not about convenience on our part. Serving God is about servanthood, yeah. servitude on our part. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He that is great, let him be your servant. He that wants to be used of God, let him beg God. Amen. To do whatever he wants to do, however he wants to do it, for his glory. You know, I heard very recently, uh, I don't remember who said it, but they I've heard it before. They said, uh, you know, in God's word, since Jesus said it, I believe it and that settles it. And it's really the truth of the matter is, Jesus said it and that settles it. We need to rest in him. We need to trust in him. Amen. Amen. Are you willing to turn the other cheek? As you walk and profess Christianity, I mean, our young people today that are trying to be Christians and serve God, and I remember what it was like, amen, coming down during revival and praying at the altar and going back to school Monday morning carrying my Bible and under my arm, and, and everybody looked at me, and, and brother, I'm telling you, some people had confidence. They had not seen me do that before, but it would only be a few weeks a lot of times till I would fizzle out and, and I would leave the Bible at home and I would, amen, lose my boldness about talking to people about Jesus. And you say, well, Brother Jordan, what are you saying? I'm just trying to tell you today, the only way we keep our boldness, the only way we keep our courage, the only way we keep our stamina to be a stalwart Christian is to walk in communion and fellowship with the Lord. We bow low. Amen. He must increase and we must decrease. When we cease to fellowship with him, amen, Sister Tisha, it can happen easily. It can happen easily. We just don't feel like it. This week, the last couple of days, I mean, I've not felt like praying the way I normally pray. My prayer has been mostly laying in bed or sitting in the recliner or in the office chair and just asking God to just have his way. Lord, you know my heart. And I'm telling you, it seems like it's not easy to be faithful. But God said we can do it. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. How can we do it? By looking to Him. Looking to the author and finisher of our faith, the Lord yes. Jesus Christ. Okay, first of all, this is really the only number that I've got. But number one, <laughs> it says we must first be with Jesus. A man. A person. Under authority. In other words, we must be under authority. Amen. I must go, I must do, I must be what God says for me to do all those things. And it don't matter that we feel incapable. It don't matter that we feel like we can't. In Mark 3 and 14, it says, And he ordained 12 that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach. In other words, that they should be with him. Amen. They had to be with Jesus. They had to be in fellowship and communion with Jesus. They had to be under authority. I remember one time I was in a, a church in a situation and, and uh, I was busy in a church there. It was Sunday morning. We need to be in the house of God. It was a good church, a larger church than ours. And, and I was there and the, the preacher had told 
told me the day before he wanted me to preach, and I said, no, 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 I don't, I don't want to preach. I don't feel I prayed about it already. I didn't feel led, amen, to preach. But we don't walk by feeling. But anyway, Sunday morning, amen, that man got up on the pulpit, and I was not even, I may have had slacks and a shirt on, but I don't think I had a tie on. I didn't have a blazer on. I wasn't prepared to minister. And as I walked up, brother, I'm telling you, God gave me, if I, if I remember right, I believe it was uh, Mark chapter 2. And it's another instance there to where they were reasoning. They were reasoning. And they were trying to figure things out. And I'm telling you today, you're going to be spending a lot of your time in this, in this world reasoning things out, figuring, figuring out what God is wanting you to do. And again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway, many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive him. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them, and they came unto him, bringing... That's not, that's not it. If it is, it's further down. Anyway, I didn't think I'd ever forget that because God so come on the scene just like that. But they were reasoning. They were reasoning in their heart. And when you and I are reasoning in our heart, we need to be reasoning under the fearfulness and the respect of God. We need to be asking God that His will might be done. That we might be pleasing unto Him. Anyway, this preacher said, Brother Jordan's going to come down and going to minister for us. And it wasn't like Brother Persinger, amen, saying, uh, Brother Charlie's going to come up and going to uh, preach for us this morning. Amen. But I got up and I got the got my Bible and walked around and come to the front. And I think I exhorted for like 12 or 15 minutes there. But I shared my heart. And I'm telling you who I believe God was speaking to in the service. It was the shepherd. The shepherd. Not me giving any kind of reprimand. I don't know his life. I don't know what God may have been trying to do. But I believe God was trying to encourage him that in the midst of whatever trial he might be facing or about to face, for him to grab hold to the horns of the altar and let God lead him. That's where we need to be, amen. It'd be being led by the Lord. Amen. We don't need to wait until we get in a dilemma to cry out to God. We need to be faithful, amen, when we're going through things. And James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, the brother of James, and he surnamed them Boanerges, which is sons of thunder. Brother, remember I said thunder, commotion, amen, uh, things that are not really convenient, commotion, confusion, and a noisy disturbance. And sometime I've seen in my own life, not just in other homes as we were pastoring and ministering and evangelizing, but even in my own life. It's not that Sister Jordan and I were arguing, but brother, I'm telling you, sometimes it don't make sense. And I'm telling you, you need to find yourself in a place of humility before God to where you will let the authoritative structure of God that he's established be in place. Yes. Can I get an amen? Amen. Yeah. I'm not saying the wife's a doormat. Never, never, never. But I am saying the husband needs to realize, amen, that he's going to stand up. Did you know, I really believe things would have went different if Adam and Eve would have been together when Eve was walking in the garden there and began to carry on the conversation with the serpent. I don't know how it would have turned out. I believe that, that God uh, was going to bring every one of us to a place of, of decision toward him. And he was going to oh, make a way for us. We know Genesis 3.15 shows that. But it's, it's not about being a big I or a little you. But it's about walking in the spirit. Yes. That we not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It's about being faithful to God. And endeavoring to please God with all of our heart. Our mind, our soul, and our strength. As was read earlier, we need to be faithful to the Lord. And we need to let God lead us and guide us in the way that He is pleased to do. Amen? God wants to use you today. 
And I ask you, are you willing to be under authority? You say, well, my companion's not walking in the fear of God. My companion's not walking with God. There was a time when we were in Montrose, and I don't remember, but it seems like we had like three men in our church, and we may have had 10 or 12 women in our church that was married, and I mean, they were there, and it, sometimes I felt it was awkwardly out of balance, and I felt like that they, the husbands probably really struggled and felt like that they were possibly more devoted to me than they were him. But brother, I'm telling you, the devil will try to hinder you in any way, but you need to examine and make sure that your heart is a heart of humility, a heart that seeks to please God. My heartbeat was to elevate those husbands, to minister and to try to encourage them, amen, to make the tough choices. Forget all the noise. Forget all the, 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 the commotion. Yes. And be faithful yes. to what you believe God wants you to be and do. Amen. John, this, this uh, son of Onerges, says, Shall we call fire down out of heaven and consume them? Now you notice he was asking Jesus, Shall we call fire down out of heaven? Not fire down out of hell. Or fire up out of hell. You know, you can do almost everything you do to make it spiritual. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Elijah, Elijah called fire down. Well, no. But I'm telling you, I believe that as I was reading this chapter, we are too quick to shake the dust off of our feet concerning people's hearts and lives. Just because they don't look like us or act like us or don't greet us in the way that we feel we need to be greeted. We need to be careful. Many times I was thinking and I'm going to be uh, picking on my son uh, this morning, but I was thinking back before he became a plumber and, uh, uh, you know, he, he, he was working up in and out and, and when he's there, he just wasn't as, as confident perhaps as he may be, feel he is now. But when he was there after just a few weeks or a few months, I don't remember what it was, uh, brother, I'm telling you, God used him to be a light. He was able to lead different people to the Lord. Brother Jerry, Brother Juan. I mean, some of them have come to church and we've been able to minister to the men that are going on for the Lord far as I know today and love God. Amen. Then when he moved on from there, amen, he went to uh, uh, the, the other place, Tom's, and he was there and everything. And, and there's people that I believe one young man comes to my mind. He had graduated from Bible college with a degree, but he wasn't really living what he knew in his heart and mind. He wasn't really dedicated to that point. And through the daily, amen, communication and talking and, and not beating him over the head and badgering him or bashing him, but he was encouraged to fight the good fight of faith and wound up marrying a good godly woman, amen, and is serving God and faithful to God's house today. But I'm telling you, it's important for us to keep a tear. Keep a heartbeat for the lost. Care for the dying. I've heard preachers over the years say, as you go home today, go home with someone upon your heart and take that person before the Lord on a regular basis until God brings them, amen, to Him in complete surrenders. Amen. We don't need to just disagree with somebody just because we know better we don't need to just take and do something just because we don't like who's presenting what they're wanting to do, something they've done. They've damaged their reputation. They've done this or that. I'm telling you, John faced his own trials in life. When he was there, shall I call fire out of heaven? No, brother. He was reprimanded in the morning. And he was told, you don't know what spirit you are of. Right. Yeah. We need to examine and be sensitive to what spirit we're of. It don't matter how good we live this life. We're going to go down to the end, toward the end of our road. And there's going to be a lot of instances that we wish we could have done it different. I wish I would have made different choices. Andrew acts like he's all happy about his dad and excited about his dad and, and honors his dad and everything. And I thank the Lord for that. But if he only knew. I'm at the board this past week with 
Brother Andrew last week, and uh, as we were there meeting the board, they just kind of, I didn't expect this at all, but they asked me, what, well, tell us about Andrew. What do you think? I said, well, I said, Andrew is the kind of boy that when he got tired, he went to bed, no matter what kind of party was going on. Andrew was the kind of boy that if you told him you'd get a whipping, when you get home, when you got home, if you, if you hadn't given him the whipping in five or ten minutes, he's going to come and remind you. And boy, their eyes was like this. I didn't think about telling him. He's a soldier of the cross. He's faithful. He's faithful to the Lord. I didn't think about telling him he's a good preacher. Already passing his dad, and uh, we got to be careful. You know what I mean? I didn't think about all those good things. So, dad ain't always the best, but dad's got a heart to be the best. Remember when we used to give those flowers to mama? And she'd take those flowers, brother Nick, and she'd pat us on the back and just squeeze us into her, and she would just act like that was a dozen roses. It's the thought that counts. She's yes. told me so many times. Thank you for the thought. And I'm telling you what, there's a lot of times in life that God, amen, looks at our heart. And I'm not even sure he's able to thank us for the thought. But he loves us anyway. And he cares for us. And we've got to learn to grow and to trust in the Lord with all of our heart, our mind, our soul, and our strength. Who is it? that will trust and obey concerning the Lord. Who is it today that will come in under and say, God, I'm not going to look at the mistakes of yesterday, yester month, yester year, but God, I'm going to forget those things that are behind and I'm going to reach forth unto those things in my life that you can choose to use for your glory. God brought John from a place of wanting to bring fire to destroy, of wanting to to pull them out of the fire. And I'm telling you a lot of times when there's people that are getting on your nerves. Have you ever noticed that sometimes, a lot of times in my life I've noticed that it's the people that I have been praying for. Whether it was at work or whether it was uh, you know, an acquaintance or whatever. And I have been praying, God give me an opportunity to minister to them. God some way open their eyes and let them see their need of you, Lord. That they have a desire not just to be in church, but a desire, Lord, to walk in communion and fellowship with you. Yes. And then right before you have opportunity to, to be an inspiration to them and maybe even pray for them, something happened and they do something that upsets you. And you get out of the spirit and into the flesh. How many times has that been me? To where if I could have always stayed spiritual, I believe I could have. Maybe had them, amen, for the Lord that day. And sometimes it was months later and sometimes it didn't even happen. And I believe sometimes it was because me. I was not willing to be used of God in a way God desired me to be used. And God wants us to yield to Him, amen. In Mark 3 and 33, and He answered them saying, Who is my mother and my brethren? And he looked round about on them which sat about him and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and mother. What he's saying is that they told him, Master, your mother and, and brethren are without waiting for you. They want to talk to you. Jesus was saying, I have things that are, that are really more important than are you going to be home for dinner. I have things that are more important than the natural. I have the supernatural that I'm dealing with. And I must be about my father's business, he said. Amen. And there arose a reasoning among them. Which of them should be greatest? A doubtful and disputing consideration. And I believe it's very possible, and I've never even thought about this this way to this extent, but... In reading and, and looking at the words and everything, I believe there was very possibly even some jealousy or some contention among the disciples, the apostles, because they were young and very early on in ministry. And Jesus, perceiving the thought of their heart, took a child, told them they must come as a little child. A little child is not perfect. 
But if you ever noticed anything about a little child, a little child can be upset with somebody they're playing with. You take their toy or they take their toy or whatever, they can be upset. And it's just moments until they're back as if it had never happened. And they're loving them again and being a friend to them again. Verse 49, and John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him, because he followeth not with us. And Jesus said unto him, Forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us. I think a lot of times if we as husbands and we as companions, amen, and we as leaders, we as friends, if we could take and, and when the devil, the accuser comes, you know, the devil is so quick to get us to begin to nitpick at one another. Whether it be at job or at school or church or wherever. The devil wants us to find fault. The devil wants us to, to try to figure this out and that out. And you know some of this stuff, it's not really for us to know the reason. It's not really for us to understand it all right then. And I'm nothing, thank the Lord, nothing's coming to my mind. But what I'm trying to tell you is, if you will always, my wife used to say with our kids and even to me sometimes, now replace that with three good thoughts. <laughs> replace that negative thought with three good thoughts. Amen. And sometimes she might have said five good thoughts. <laughs> but uh, we need to forbid them not. It's not. If they're not for us, they're against us. It may be Jesus said if they're not against us, they're for us. Amen. It's not that our kids are wanting to be rebellious. They're just trying to do their thing. Amen. One person said it's not that they're really for you or against you. They're just for themselves. At that time, they're just looking out for numero uno. They're just wanting to do what they want to do. They've not really considered the depth of, of whether it's rebellious or whether it's independence or whether it's right or wrong. Sure, there's pleasure in sin for a season, a little bit of good time. But don't let that little bit of good time do damage in your heart and life. Ask God to protect you. To put an edge of protection around about you. To where, amen, when you get in that place or that predicament and people are around you, it's almost like a, a, a hula hoop there that my granddaughter is having play with. Brother, step off into that hula hoop and say, God, protect me. Let me discern if anybody's got any ill motive toward me. Protect me. God, don't let me think this person's my friend if they're my foe. And God, don't let me be tripped up to think they're my foe if your plan and your heartbeat is for them to be my friend. Oh, but God, help me as a dad. Help me as a Christian. Help me as a believer. Oh, man, woman, boy, or girl, to walk in fellowship and communion with you. Trust in that you're going to do something whether I can see it or understand it or not. Keep me safe, O Lord, in the palm of your hand. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. This is talking about Jesus. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? And he turned and rebuked them. Whenever the Lord reprimands you, whenever the Lord speaks to your heart and you feel that God has, has disciplined you or God has checked you, you need to rejoice and thank God for that. Yeah, amen. amen. In everything, give thanks. Thank God He chastens, He disciplines, He corrects, He instructs those that He loves. He said, and this was uh, in the Bible before it was a curse word. He said, if the Lord chastens you not, then are you not sons, but you're bastards. You're illegitimate children. Brother, I'm talking about we're not illegitimate children. Sure, I wasn't born a Jew. Sure, amen. I wasn't born over in Jerusalem or Israel. But brother, I'm telling you, I was grafted in. And one day, God began to deal with my heart. And God began to check my Changed me and he wrote my name. Yes. Amen. In the book of life. Amen. 
God didn't just regenerate us. God wants our life to be a, a life that has a testimony. A life of righteousness. A life of example. To be salt and light. For those that are in need round about us. We need to be willing to share the good news. At school, at work, at play, wherever we are, we need to let people know that I'm one of his. Yes. And I thank him for it. Amen. 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 First John 3 and 14 says, As we know that we have passed from death unto life, because we love the brethren. Yes. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we are also or we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. God wants you to lose your life down here. What that means, the Bible says if you, if you save your life down here, then you'll lose it. If you lose your life down here, then you'll save it. What he's saying is don't live to where this is your best life now. This is the only hell that you and I will ever go through. If we're walking in communion and fellowship with God, sure we're going to be judged by our rights and our wrongs. Tell them, amen, to him that hath shall be given more to him that hath not shall be taken away even that he hath. But as far as we make in heaven, brother, I'm heaven bound. Unless I throw in the towel and renege on God. Amen. There's more to the power of God than you and I are living today. Amen. Pentecost is not just something that's just dispersed freely without a price. But Pentecost came with a price. Our free land came with a price. How many hundreds of thousands of soldiers died and gave their life for America? This great land, America. Luke 1 and 9, or Luke 9 and 1 says, Then he called the twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said unto them, Take nothing for your journey, neither staves nor scrip nor bread nor the money, neither have two coats apiece, and whatsoever house ye enter in, there abide thence, and thence depart. In other words, don't be going from house to house to house. Amen. Stirring up this. But when you go someplace, stay put till God's through with you. Amen. The house, anytime you see the house mentioned in scriptures, talking about the church. Amen. And whosoever will not receive you when you go out of that city, shake off the dust of your feet for a testimony against them. Brother, I'm telling you, but you need to do war for their souls before you shake the dust off. You need to pray and get God's heartbeat and God's mind toward them. Revelation 1 and 1. And the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, showing to his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Church, it's coming to pass very quickly. They were looking for the Lord in their day 2,000 years ago. But I'm telling you, his coming is upon us. Who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw? Who bear record? Who? This is a relative, sometimes demonstrative pronoun. I was trying to impress this translator when I wrote that down. Amen. I'm not sure what all that means. But some of you educated ones can figure it out. But if you think you're going to escape through this world, Without being one of the who. You're going to have a fight to fight. Amen. You're going to have a decision to make. You're going to have to stand with the Lord. And you're going to have to realize. You dads are going to have to realize. Sometimes even the wife. Sometimes even the mother. May not agree with you. You need to be walking prayerfully before God. To where in that instance. You so know the heartbeat of God to where you can look at your wife in faithfulness to God and love and faithfulness to her and say, this is what we're doing. Amen. I'm not talking about foolishly. I'm not talking about stirring up a controversy. But I'm talking about living above reproach. Living in a way to where 
she can follow you. Look a little way to where she can admire your relationship with God and know that you're a praying man. And if she ever says, have you considered this? Or she gives a, a, a humble thought. You know, like uh, Esther before Ajira was there. You think she didn't consider? I mean, brother, how that, that Vashti had been cast out and could never see the king again? But I'm telling you, her uncle said for her to go in to the king. And there's times God's going to call on you to do things that you may not understand. Blessed is he in Revelations 1 and 3. Blessed is he that readeth. And they that, that may not be very clear what I just said. What I'm trying to get you to see is be sensitive to the Lord. Be willing to trust God even though you do not feel the assurance of the outcome. Your faith may be a little weak. Like that man that said, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. Amen. 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 Be faithful to God first and foremost every time. Amen. And walking in the Spirit as much as you know how. Yes. And pleasing God. And when it seems like everything else is not coming as quickly and as clearly as you like, seek Him. Ask His will. Amen. You wives don't just, just go along and let your husbands, my goodness, there's things that I could tell you that wouldn't even be edifying. Uh, you know what I mean about people that have been in this church over the years. I mean, I mean, it blow your mind when we first hear, come here from Colorado. There was one guy came that had just spent ten years in prison, I believe it was, and he had been a bus school uh, kid and had gone to the Christian school here. And I mean, there's others, all kinds of wicked, vile things that take place. When people run away from God. They never intended to go that far. But the devil don't want to just damage or injure you. He wants to destroy you. That's right. Don't let him. If you'll trust God, God will keep that from happening. In Acts 4 and 13, now when he saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. To take with admiration and wonder. To look closely at they marveled. How is it these men speak with such, not just boldness, but with such wisdom? Because they've been with Jesus. They've been with Jesus to the degree that you and I have been with Jesus. It can almost be a thermometer in our conversation. The lack of wisdom of when we wane spiritually and not been in fellowship and communion with God the way we need. There's things that we don't always understand. But you can always trust the Word of God to be faithful and true. And I was going to share with you in Luke chapter 9 and 1. Said and he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And one commentator said, God gave them power and authority to do it, but they were not able to do it because of their unbelief, because of their lack of communion with God. The devil wants you to think you don't have time to pray. We don't have time not to pray. Amen. We've got to pray. Yeah, we have to. We've yeah. got to pray and walk with God. Let God do a sanctifying in our heart, in our life, in our mind, in our will, in our desires. Let God use us. Because God knows when you get somebody on your heart and you begin to pray for them, it's almost like you get yoked up with them spiritually. You know, the Bible says he that commits adultery with somebody that's not his wife, they the two become one flesh. Brother, I'm telling you, when you begin to get yoked up with somebody and God, you see them on the street, you may never see them again. You may not know them. They may be male, female, boy, girl, dad. They may be young or old is what I'm trying to say, I think. But if God lays them upon your heart to pray for them, 
you pray for them. And you pray for them, and you pray for them, and you take them before the Lord. Remember the guy at Walmart? That guy that had that World War II cap on, and I've never seen him again. I've never seen him again. And truthfully, I hadn't prayed for him in a month, probably. But what I'm trying to tell you is there was weeks or months that I did pray for him. Why? Because God laid him upon my heart. God laid him upon my heart. When God lays somebody upon your heart, you don't know what they may be going through. They may not even know what they may be going through, but they need you to undergird. Yeah. Brother Joe Bearclough that was just here, missionary to Peru, and we went out to eat after one of the services, and he shared with us how that Brother and Sister James Martin, they were there, and they were facing just a horrible atrocity. It was terrible. I mean, there was two men that come that I don't know if they had a vow to kill, but they were planning on killing Brother Joe that service. And they were hearing gunshots outside the church. And I mean, it was just a wicked, vile time. And when they were there and everything, they went out and then siphoned the gas out of their car and out of their truck. And they drove the truck, he told. I can't remember how many miles. An hour and a half, they drove the truck with the fuel gauge working and no gas in the tank for an hour and a half until God, they, they'd go to this road in places Brother Joe had never been before and they'd turn them around. The National Guard of that country would turn them around. You can't go forward. And they'd get on another road and go and then hit a dead end. And that happened three, two, three, four times, three or four times, I think. And he said, I was lost and didn't have a clue where I was, whether I was north, south, east, or west. Had never been there before. He was distraught. His wife and kids were in the truck. And he just began to drive. And he said from that moment, he said he drove straight to his house. And God protected him and got home and looked on the email and there was an email from the Martins said, we don't know what you're going through, but we told God it was such a heavy burden. We were not going to stop praying until we felt a peace and a victory and a release. And the email was just sent, just moments before. And I'm talking about God knows your predicament. Dads, when you feel helpless, I can't tell you the hundreds of times that I felt like a little boy in a man's world. I didn't know how to what to say, what to do. I didn't have the wisdom to live that life and be faithful. But God would show me how to get through it and learn from it. And I'm telling you, if you'll trust the Lord, God is going to use you to be a blessing down here or he would take us home. But church, please realize and understand the days are going to get worse and worse and worse. Somebody asked me, do you think the Antichrist is alive and well? There's not a doubt in my mind. I really believe with all my heart that the Antichrist is alive and well. Wickedness is prevailing. Evil men and seducers waxing worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Who can you trust? Who in the world in Washington can you trust? Donald Trump can't help us. We need a miracle man. That sounds like Jesus. There used to be a song about that. Jesus is your miracle man. All right, praise the Lord. Are you serving him? Do you feel like that you're not doing the best job in the world? Please be encouraged. Whatever you do, don't give up. Don't be weary and well-doing. The Bible says in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. I remember when I was just a teenager. Man, Christmas is... Seemed like they would never come around. And now it seems like all these things never quit coming around. <laughs> 68 is not as comfortable as 18. <laughs> but God's still faithful. Amen. He's still faithful. He's a wonderful God. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Let me ask you, if you're here today, and I'm not trying to embarrass anybody, uh, you don't have to. You don't make a show. You don't have to come up front. You don't have to do whatever. But if if you desire prayer from the church here, 
that God would just help us to hold each other's hands up and hold your hand up. I really covet your prayers. That God would help me to be the dad that God wants me to be. The husband that God wants me to be. The Christian that God wants me to be. The pastor and shepherd that God wants me to be. If you're here today and you'd say, Pastor, would you in the church hold me up in prayer? Let me see your hand up and down. Amen. Male, female. Yes, God sees these hands. Pray for me. Pray for me. Let's pray for one another. Let's ask God, every hand that was raised, let's ask God to minister to us and make us stronger in Him. And let us not be overconfident or foolish, but let us realize that we're not near the flock that the devil wants us to think we are. Amen? Amen. And if the devil don't fight you by trying to make you feel like you're a flock, you need to really examine yourself. Because I know me, my, myself personally, I'm not all that. Amen? Amen. I need him. Yes. I need him. I know preachers, good, godly men, that have walked away into in immorality. I know good, godly men that have failed God. How'd they do it? Just one thought at a time. Mm -hmm. One lack of prayer at a time. Whenever you pray, trust that God hears. Remember that preacher telling me, well, Brother Charlie, next time you feel that way, just when you're down talking to pray, you feel it, just cuss. Just cuss. He knew I wasn't that bad. He knew me. He said, oh, he said, you would never do that, right? He said, you mean to tell me you think God's going to hear you curse, but God's not going to hear your prayer for help? When a son asks a, a fish, he don't, he don't get a scorpion. One of the hardest things that I remember doing in a long time Yesterday, I just didn't know if I was even going to be able to be in church today. I felt horrible. And our grandson was over there while they were cooking. And I'm telling you, I just wanted to pick him up and hold him. But I couldn't. It would have been foolish in the natural. And I'm telling you, if God shows you that something is foolish, or there's a caution there. Steer, steer clear of it. Brother Marcus, whenever he goes to Florida, don't dare go against the will of God, the Spirit of God. If God tells you to do something, you do it. If God don't tell you, amen. Ask God to give these girls or whoever is going to be responsible quadruple wisdom. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Would you stand this morning? Y'all been so precious and so attentive, and I appreciate you putting up with me, my voice, my being late. Do you realize that we could be home before we even walk out these doors today? Amen. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Yes, right. He's going to come get us. Amen. But since we're here, let's be his hands extended to try to help somebody serve the Lord and enjoy the joy of the Lord that we enjoy as Christians. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. If you're here and you don't know the Lord and you want to know him, Please, the altars are always open. Find a place to pray, and we'll be glad and happy to pray with you. And you may want to pray and know the Lord fine, but just want to pray. You feel free to do that too. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father, we love you today. God, we thank you, Lord, and we need you to help us day by day, Lord, to walk in your will, to be pleasing to you to be sensitive to your leading. God, we don't know how to go out or come in, Lord. Oh, show us how to be faithful. God, show us, Lord, how to not listen to the enemy, to realize that our adversary, the devil, goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But God, let us realize, Lord, that God, he's defeated. Let your word continually come alive in us and let us be faithful to trust you. I ask you to keep each heart and each mind and spirit that's here today. We surrender to you, Lord. We yield to you, Lord, today. And we ask you to just do what you want to do for your glory, Lord. 
You're wonderful. We praise you, God, and we thank you. Have your way. Keep your people safe. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you, God. Revive our hearts. God, as we get down to pray, let us fill you afresh, God. Let Amen. Be praying for the prophecy seminar tonight. Brother Donovan and Michael Smith are going to, uh, the two Smiths, they're going to be uh, ministering on, I believe, the seventh chapter of Revelation, the fourth five, chapter. Six, five, six, and seven tonight is going to be wonderful. Amen. Five, six, and, and lots seven. Lots of questions are going to be answered. And we're going to learn something that we most likely never heard before. Cool. Praise the Lord. That's exciting. And let me tell you, that's not just idle smack. <laughs> These guys have been doing a phenomenal job. They Two birthdays and one anniversary. Two birthdays and one anniversary. All right, who are they? Brother McQueen, Sister Hazel Smith, and Brother Sister Smith's anniversary. All right, so let's sing a happy birthday. Uh, sit down.